Well, we're here at your technology day with Mitsubishi Carbide UK. This is the part that you've created on the Grub 5 axis behind us. Talk to me about the applications and the tools that you've used on this product. Yeah, so we've done this part with Grub and with OpenMind programming it, and we've decided to try and use more modern strategies, so trichoidal milling and a lot of stuff where Traditionally, we would use what we call our chip splitter as a roughing tool, whereas I've tried to add it as a finishing application from here to show we can achieve a, a 2RA finish, which for a lot of companies is a really good finish. So you've used a lot of tools in applications that would actually be in day-to-day -day machining for customers. I can see you've done some pocketing, you've done some drilling, etching, um, trochoidal milling. So why have you put that into this application? So. The way for machines are going forward is it's a lot of trying to keep the load out of the spindle. So to keep the load out of the spindle, trichoidal milling puts it through the tool, vertically through the spindle, so you're not, or horizontally in the grub case, so you're not putting all that load through the tool. So you're running at a very low percentage on your feet. So we're running high feeds, probably 10, 15% step overs on some of the applications. And it's all about just trying to keep efficiency. The more efficient you can be, tool in machine wise, the more quicker you get the parts out, the longer the tool life of the machine is and the tooling. I think that resonates with a lot of customers that you go into on a day-to-day -day basis. Talk to me about the material you've got here because you don't just see this material everywhere, do you? Your customers use a lot of different materials. So this is C45 steel, so it's a fairly generic sort of steel. I didn't want to do a, an aluminium type demo. So what we tried to do is run almost an aluminium type speed. So a lot of the data we've used isn't, well, it's not standard data. So we're trying to push the tooling, but not to the point of the tooling breaking. We're trying to show that the window of opportunity when you've got the correct setup, the correct work holding and everything in it, we can push the tooling. So we're probably at two, two and a half times cut data. But as you've seen from the tooling, there's nowhere. So it's all well within the, a usable for customers sort of limit. And I know this is a demo piece, but your customers will be using those tools and coming back to you for those tools time and time again. So detect days like you've done today, show your customers that your range of tools really can suit any customer out there. Yeah, I think it's important to, you know, I can show people a presentation or a slideshow. As engineers ourselves, we always want to see something happening. And it's more fun for me if I can see some swarf flying around, cutting it dry, because we like to cut stuff dry. And it's just about teaching people, you know, we're all a little bit, I can go in and tell you how to cut something, but until you see it and prove it yourself, that's what we all want to see. And it's not all about just selling singular tools to customers and leaving them, is it? It's, it's more of a solution provider as well. Yeah, it's all about, you know, we want the best outcome for the customer. So it's not about, here's one tool that'll work for you and away we go. It's about, this is the best process for you guys. So. Again, we've, instead of just ball nose in the top, we've used an end mill because it's got us an amazing finish on a bigger step over than if I'd have run a ball nose over it, I probably wouldn't have got that finish. Yeah, I completely agree. And you've got so many different surfaces that you've hit here and uh, so many different application wise. If you do look forward to doing some more tech days, do you think you'll use any different materials and things like that? Yeah, I think for the market base, we want to try and expand up our tooling. I don't, I, for me personally, I'd rather try and stay away from aluminium because a lot of the companies use it. Yeah. And everyone tries to show aluminium and it's a fairly simple thing to try and show. You can do very complex parts very quickly, but you're probably not showcasing things to the best of the ability. Ideally, I'd like to hit some titanium, but uh, the engineer in me is just constantly chasing the next bit, so I would 100% want to do more and more exotic things and more and more complex parts. You know, it, when we've proven the part out, me and the guys from Grub were just, can we try and break something? You know, what, what is the limit of tooling? And so far, I've not managed to find it with some of our cutters, which is a little bit frustrating for me because I want to see what the limit is. But, you know, we've run the data much higher than what we're running today and still achieve some amazing parts.